introduction, Dr. Carlo. And thanks everybody for attending this meeting and this presentation. It's my honor in this my first visit to Asia to share with you some of our experiences working with uh, projects of regional control during the last 15 years and also what we have been done with BioPortal the last five, six years. First, I would like to share with you this map of the United States. We can see in this map from 1920 how the production of pigs in the United States was located in this area in the Midwest that is where the grain and the soybeans are produced. Almost 100 years later, for uh, pig production continue being located in the same regions, very much in, in the Midwest. However, uh, there are some differences now. 100 years ago, most of the pig farms were about uh, 20, 30 sows. But now we can see in some places that we can have 20 or 30,000 uh, sows in a single farm. Also, in some other places, we can have 100,000 uh, pigs in a single site. Or in some small regions, we can have several farms going from 2,000 to 10,000 pigs in just an, an a small extension, in a, in a very small area. So there are real different type of production 100 years ago to these dates. Another big difference is the movement of pig. On those, on, those, uh, on those years, 100 years ago, most of the production was located in that farm and was consumed in the local towns. Now we can see a lot of movement of animals between states. In this case, we can see that in 2014, the state of Iowa imported a little bit more than 27 million pigs from some other states and even from Canada. And the same is, is uh, uh, happening uh, in the case of uh, Minnesota, where we imported about 12 million pigs last year, and in some other states in that area. So there is a lot of movement of animals. And of course, when you are moving animals, you are moving diseases with, with them. We can see in, in, in this representation how we can not really control disease movement in some areas. You can have a disease presented in your, your farm and suddenly that disease can be expand to the neighborhood and not only to the neighborhood, but that disease because of movement and high concentration of animals can be found really quickly all over the place, all over the country, and in some cases beyond the borders of the country. We have seen in the case of peers how every two or three years we have a new variant, a new very aggressive variant of peers, and that happens again and again through time. And it's, it's also important to consider that uh, this huge uh, concentration of animals and movements can be also affected uh, because of the characteristics of peers in this case, we have some studies by Dr. Scott D showing how peers can be traveled by air up to 9.1 kilometers from one farm to, to another. So because of all these characteristics of poor production and peers, we know that even when now we have a lot of tools to control peers in our farm, in our individual farm, still we need to go beyond that individual farm control and take into consideration our surroundings, take into consideration our neighbors. As Dr. Jan mentioned early this morning, so in order to really control birds, we need to go beyond and try to uh, start working with programs or regional control of birds. The regional control of peers, what it means is that all the 
producers and veterinarians working in a uh, given area will work together looking for the commonwealth. That is the, the basic idea that working together, it will be easier for each of us to reach our objective of production and reduction of health, health problems. As Dr. Dale Paulson would say, transmit unto your neighbor as you would have your neighbor transmit unto you. When we work on the control of diseases from a regional pers uh, perspective, of course, you are improving directly the health status and productivity of your pigs, but also, indirectly, you are helping to reduce the amount of first virus circulating in those, in, those, in those regions and eventually reducing the possibility of new variants of first virus appearing in those, in those regions and being moved to, uh, to other regions. With this uh, type of uh, approach on mind, we started in 2002 in Minnesota working in a project in the county of Rice a little bit south of Minneapolis, and then in 2004, we continue on Stevens. This project is still working in Stevens, and now includes, includes the whole northern part of Minnesota. In some other projects that we continue working at that time was in, in my place in Sonora, in northwest Mexico, just south of Arizona. So those were some of the early examples of uh, projects of regional control in the in, in, in America in the Americas with all the uh, experiences that we got through time uh, from the different projects of regional control in BI in 2014 we produced we generated these guidelines uh, is this this document was published in the Journal of the American Association of Swine Veterinarians in 2012 and, and 2014. And these are just some general guidelines of how to conduct a project of regional control. Because some people sometimes wanted to start doing something to control birds in a, regional, uh, in, in a, in a given area. So these are some general guidelines of how, how, to, how to do it. Basically, this guidelines are made up of five different phases. In the first phase is what we call the feasibility study, and in and, and the next slide we, we will see a little bit more in detail what each of these phases mean. Then for the second phase is what we call the identification of pig-related sites in that region. Then we go directly in more detail to the region character characterization then with all the information collected in these uh, first phases, we start designing the strategies of pest control for the region. And finally, we go to the phase of execution and monitoring of the strategies uh, uh, being designed. In the feasibility study, uh, we want to know if people, local people, producers, and veterinarians are really committed to work uh, for this type of project. Because a lot of time there is people that express their desire to do something, but uh, not necessarily all of the people in that area will, will want to work toward that end. So we want to know that there is a leadership in, the, in that area willing to work in this type of project. Of course, we need some funding that could come from the uh, association of pork producer or for, from some federal agencies in order to make uh, the, the project work. We need uh, also to work with some institutions, uh, could be uh, laboratories of diagnostics, some universities, to support the development of the project. We need to communicate what is happening during the development of the, of the project with all the participants. And what is really, really important too is to have somebody, a local coordinator, somebody working directly with the participants and, work, and working also with, the, with all the supporting institutions. So we need somebody coordinating all the activities of the project. 
in the second phase, we, we need to identify every single uh, peak site in the region because when we have started different projects in, in, in the United States, something that we have not, nothing, uh, uh, nothing is that uh, there is not a complete database of the location of the different peak sites in a given area. There's always incomplete databases, so we need to be sure how many peak sites are in the region and where they are located. Once we have uh, that information, is when people start sharing more and more and more and more in information. It's really important, uh, especially during the first year when we started with this type, this type of project, we share this type of uh, Im images to the participants in such a way that they, they need to be conscious that they are not isolated units. So in reality, this farm here is somehow linked to this farm here. Whatever is happening here could eventually reach this point. So in reality, we are not island. We, we, we are part of a bigger farm, of a global farm, or at least of a neighborhood. So we need to be really conscious of whatever we do or don't do in this place could eventually af affect this other place. Then uh, we start collecting more information about uh, the type of production in the different sites and the purse status in those, in those specific sites. After we have these basic pieces of information, we continue going to classify the farms according to the, to the, the, the type of virus circulating there. In this case, we apply the guidelines uh, uh, published by Dr. Uh, Holcomb and others also in the Journal of the American Association of Swine uh, Veterinarians. In this case, every single farm in that region needs to follow a certain uh, a requirement, needs to meet certain requirements in order to be classified from positive unstable all the way to negative. So there are some general uh, requirements regarding the number of samples, the frequency of sampling that you need to uh, to execute in order to reach the different uh, classifications. What is also really, really important is to know what is our risk of becoming infected, of becoming uh, infected with PERS. For that, we applied the program PADRAP that is managed by uh, Iowa State University. With this program, with this program, you can know exactly what is your internal risk and what is your external risk, risk of becoming infected with PERS and work toward those specific points in order to reduce the risk of uh, becoming infected with PERS. Then you can display that information and see what are the higher points of risk in the area and trying to work to reduce, working, reducing each of these individual risk, you will reduce, in general, the risk of the area of becoming infected with PERS. With all this information that you collected during the first three phases of the program, then you can get that information and develop some strategies of PERS control. Of course, uh, as we have seen before in the, in the uh, five-step process, you will need to follow some of those uh, steps and also you need to eventually develop contingency plans in case of some of this solution don't work as you want, so you need to do some modification of changes according uh, uh, with the specific problem that you're facing in that, in that, in that operation. Finally, of course, you are going to execute whatever the solution you selected, you are going to execute it and to monitor the progress of that uh, solutions. In this process of execution and monitoring is very, very important communication. For the projects of regional control, we want to communicate all the people involved in the project, all the participants, what is happening in the area. There are several ways to do it, 
but in, in, in our case, we use this program, base case, uh, base camp, where each of the uh, participants in the project has their own uh, username and password, and they can access the program and see what is happening with my project. In some of those projects, they, they produce a newsletter. In the case of this project in Southeast Iowa, they produce a newsletter every other week. In this case, they give information to the participants of what is happening there. This project is, is about 450 different peak sites participating on it. So every other week, you can see what is the first status of the different uh, funds participating there. What are the, the changes that happened in the last two weeks there? What are the news on peers? Is there any new important from, from the uh, researchers? Is there something new? They are also published in this, news, in this uh, newspaper. Some of the information that people also share is not only related to location of the sites or to peers status, but people also share information regarding the type of virus, the variants of birth virus circulated in their farms. And in this case, with that sequence, years ago, we started generating this type of trees for the participants. And of course, uh, the, the matrix of distance, homology, and heterology of the variants of birth circulated in, in those regions. Then people. Uh, wanted to know not only how the virus was represented in the tree or was represented in the, in the matrix, but they also wanted to see how the virus was located in that specific region. Then we started generating some maps, and we could see in those maps how as, uh, as time passes, uh, the virus was, the different types of virus was presented in the different sub-regions of, uh, of that area. However, at that time, we managed just a handful of sequences, 10, 15, 20. But uh, suddenly, we had hundreds of thousands of sequences that people wanted to see reflected in some type of report. In order to better manage all those huge amount of uh, uh, information, we started looking at this program called Disease Bioportal. This is program, disease, this uh, Disease Bioportal was generated in, in the University of California in Davis with the support of the uh, United Nations Organization and the Department of Agriculture of the United States. And originally it was created to monitor foot and mouth disease worldwide. And then about almost Six years ago, we started working with UC Davis to adapt the capabilities of Bioportal to PERS. This is an image uh, of the front page of the Disease Bioportal uh, web page. Basically, what you need to do in order to fit the program, it, it is a, it's, it's a basic Excel uh, data, database. And this is the most important piece of information is a date, latitude, and longitude coordinates, and a nucleotide sequence. You can have several other fields in the Excel file if you want to have other type of analysis, but at least you need to have this type of information, time, location, and sequencing in order to make the program work. Now, this is an example in a region in the United States, in an R project, we got a, a type of virus, a new type of virus arriving in that region in, in September 2014. And then they wanted to see how that specific type of virus was expanding by that region. So with Bioportal, we got the data from that region, and we generated this video. And we could see how suddenly we had some new variants of the virus here, but it was uh, pretty much 100% homologous. However, in January, we saw in the southern part of, of, the, of the region a little bit different type of virus, 99.8 homologous to the previous one, but it was a little bit different. So 
we have the advantage of having a program where we could, for the hundreds of different sequences that we have there, we just filter to that specific type of virus that we were interested on, and we move the time scale in such a way that we could see the progression of the virus, not only in space, but also in the dendrogram. So, and after that, you can start investigating how the virus came here and how the virus moved between the different farms because they are from different companies. So they have some relation of uh, feed trucking movement and some other type of relation. So, but that was a, a posterior investigation. But what is imp it's important is that people were sharing information about location, about time of collection, and also they were sharing their sequences. In another example, in other region, this was a farm that imported 500 gill replacement into this area. They, they are also conducting a program of regional control. These gills were uh, tested first negative in the original farm. Then when they arrived to this site, they were again tested first negative, one week later, first negative, but three weeks later, they were first positive. Then everybody around, the, the, the rest of the people participating in the, in the project, they were really concerned about introducing a new PERS virus into the region. So the question was, is this new, is this uh, PERS virus new to the region? or is there something that we already have circulating there? And, and actually, they wanted to have that information from one day to the other. So they wanted that information really quick. So the huge advantage is that we already have the, the database from that region, and we have BioPortal. So in a matter of minutes, we will be able to see how the virus here we put it as the root of the tree and then compare the rest of the sequences in the database against that virus from those gills. And we could see how 60 different isolates were 98% or more homologous to that, to that uh, virus. I think the battery is, <laughs> anyway. So the point is that in just a matter of minutes, we demonstrated that this virus was actually already circulated in that area. Again, again, it's the power of people sharing information, and then you can compare the information from your side with the surroundings. This is uh, another example of how you can uh, use Thank you, Carlos. Oops. In this example, uh, this is another project. In, in this case, we started applying vaccine. And uh, at, the, at the very beginning, we can see how this is information by quarter, every three months, we have those different isolates of peers, all those sequences of peers. In, the, in, in fall and winter, we could see how we can collect about 40 different sequen uh, type of peers in that area. And then little by little, applying vaccine and some, of course, some other uh, strategies of control, that number of sequences were going down and down by quarter until in that quarter, we only have three different type of peers. One of those was vaccine. But again, with BioPortal, you can also monitor some of the actions you are applying in that region. You can also use BioPortal to visualize the classification of the peer farms in the area. And again, if you move that the time slide, there, you can see how those colors change depending on how your first classification changes, perhaps going from negative, red, all the way to green or something in between. You can see through time how those different colors are changing. 
or you can see it in, in, a, in a simple table like that, where you have the, the dates and how the different farms in the area are changing their classification. Another tool from, from, from the program is also this type of, of tables. In this table, you can compare In this table, you, you can compare the, OK, perfect. Thanks, Carlos. You can compare a sequence of interest. This is the sequence of interest against the rest of the sequences in your database. Of course, the program can generate a matrix, a big matrix of homology and heterology. But if you want to see only one specific sequence, you can have this graph comparing that sequence of interest against all the other sequence in the database, and could be by heterology or could be for, uh, by homology. You just change your selection. Or you can also get the geographical distance from this site, the site of interest, against the rest of the sites in, in, in your database. You can change the kilometers or miles or whatever. So you can, you can use some other uh, tools for the program that could be interesting in, in the analysis of what is happening in your project. Now, we are working not only with PERS. We started with PERS, but now we are working with some other diseases like uh, PED or mycoplasma. And now we are also starting working uh, with uh, influenza. For all this new type of information and, 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 and a new type of report. We are working not only with UC Davis, but now we are working also with Iowa State University and with some other D labs in Europe. Again, with all this type of information, we have been working through time with several uh, different regions in the United States, but not only in the United States, we have some relation of collaboration with some other projects in Canada and Mexico because we are not sharing for now we are sharing information uh, not only within the regional project but also between different projects we have experiences sharing experiences from this project to this project or from this project to this project so now people within uh, different projects are sharing their experiences helping each other and of course, within, the, within a project, we always communicate. If there is one outbreak in this farm, we communicate that to the rest of the farms in such a way that they can take some uh, uh, measures in order to avoid that area. Or sometimes when people is going to import some pigs that are affected with a certain disease, they can communicate to the neighboring farms. And in some cases, they have worked together in order to change the destiny of those pigs, move it to another place, or to vaccinate those pigs. So there are some things that in the past we never did. We only work and receive pigs, and whatever happen, happened around, well, that happened. But now we can communicate with our neighbors what is happening in our farms, and we have seen a lot of very, very good results. And of course, in several of those projects, we have seen through time how the productivity of their farms as, uh, is going up. That's pretty much uh, what I have, but it's always important to remember that, again, if we want to fight birds, we cannot fight birds working only in our own farm as an island, because what is happening around can affect us. So, as Dr. Janssen in the first in the first presentation today, we need to work from a regional perspective and communicate among all our neighbors what is happening. And for and, and as we continue growing this type of projects, of course, we will continue getting more and more and more information. And we need the programs that could process that information, that could process and analyze and visualize that information. And for that, we have BioPortal. Thank you.